church. It's good to be in the house of the Lord with each of you. Amen. I'm going to open up in a word of prayer and we'll worship the Lord this evening for a little bit. He's worthy. Father, uh, thank you for this opportunity to be here. Thank you for the blessing of being um, accepted and welcomed in. Thank you for the blessing of knowing you. Thank you for the blessing that you've provided through the cross. Thank you for the blessing of the Son. Thank you for the blessing of the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for the strength that you've provided each day. Thank you for the mercy, the grace, and your kindness that have sustained us every step of the way, Lord. Lord, we just uh, we just want to know you more. We want to know you a little deeper, a little more truly. We don't want to know an imitation or another version. We want to know the God of the Bible. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that you'd pour out your spirit in this place, God. Help us to be people of your presence. Give us a thirst and a hunger for the things of God.
let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your
Trade this world for you. You're the treasure, you're the price. Jesus, so song uh, this evening and um, I've been listening to a lot because um, I was trying to get through the emotions of that song uh, so that when I was able to do it here it wouldn't uh, turn into a, a mess like I have been so um, I just encourage you to, to listen to the words forgiveness has been a topic that's come up a lot um, 
and it's probably one of the hardest topics is the topic of forgiveness and but uh, his way is higher the Lord's way is higher and if you curse me then I will bless you and if you hurt me I will forgive and if you hate me then I will Oh, I 
sing that one more time. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what Father, thank you for, uh, thank you that we can say that we'll never know the price, the cost of you hanging on a cross for our sin. Thank you for paying that cost. I pray that you would help, help remind us of that very price you paid for forgiveness so that we can apply it to those in our lives, Lord. You died for my ugly, so help me to, to forgive the ugliness of those around me. Father, we give you praise this evening. We ask that you would continue to work in our hearts and our lives as we uh, move forward. As uh, Pastor Missy brings the word of God this evening, I pray, Lord, that you would bless him, that you would speak through him, that you would anoint him, that you would, that you would um, deliver the message exactly how it needs to be delivered this evening. For every ear, every mind in this room, I pray that we would hear the word of truth and that the truth would go down and, and uh, plant a seed within us, God, and I pray that you would bring increase to that. Strengthen the saints, I pray, this evening. I pray that you would lift up the head of the discouraged, that you would uh, open up the eyes of the blind, that you would um, heal the wounds of those that are broken. Lord, I ask that you would just come and have your way in this room. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How's everybody doing? You're awake? Yes. Amen. Father, though, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you still sit on the throne. And, Lord, we give you this night. Lord, go before us as we dive into your word. God, as you give me this word to share to your people, I pray that every, as Pastor Justin would say, that everything that you have to say will come out tonight, God. Lord, we just give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome to Thursday Night Worship and the Word. Amen? Woo! Hallelujah. So I got some few announcements with, for you tonight. Um, Thursday night, um, well, C group tomorrow is to study the book of Hebrew. Um, study at the Flood, Flood Quest how, um, home at 630. That's tomorrow at 630. Stronger Together Game Night, February 17 at 630 here at SEF. So you got to bring an appetizer and sign up. It's in the foyer. That's Stronger Together, game night at February 17 at 6.30 here at SEF. Amen. 
Yes. 40 and up. 40 and up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man, I'm having a hard time opening this bottle of water. Oh, my. Well, listen, I have a, uh, I have a word for you tonight. Um, this is the word that's been stirring in my heart that um, lately and it's been everywhere I go it's just been speaking to me so here I am um, tonight I have a word for you tonight that um to bring to you tonight amen and it's so amazing oh ties and offering hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah ties and offering hallelujah father we pray for this ties and offering God our Lord we thank you for the opportunity that we can come here and get to give back what is yours, God. I pray that you will bless it, multiply it, Lord, that you will go forth and invent your kingdom, God. And Lord, we just pray that you will just um, bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> well, for those of you that for the first time that you're watching us online, we want to welcome you on Thursday night, Worship and the Word. Um, we have also service at 10 a.m. on a Sunday, so hopefully we we'll see you here in there. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> well, as Pastor Justin was singing this song, right, he says the new song, and um, it really spoke to my heart because it's, this is the, the, the thing that has been in my heart for the past three weeks now. This word has been in my heart for the past three weeks, and I'm very excited to to talk about it, um, one of the words, the, um, the sense of the song, it says, he wore my sin, I'll gladly wear, wore his name. Yeah. Right? He wore my sin, and I'm gladly to wear his name. So the title of my message tonight, um, we're not, um, tonight we use it on uh, the book of Matthew, the Sermon on the Mountain, but tonight I have a sermon, uh, a word for you tonight. Um, so the title of my message is, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Amen. I am not ashamed of the gospel. He wore my sin. I'm gladly wore his name. So I got a question for all of us tonight, right? Before I read into the word, I got a question for you. I am not ashamed of the gospel. I got a question for all of us and the people that are watching online tonight. It says, um, if I would ask your coworkers at your job and the people that you're around with, if they know that you are a Christian, what would they say? If I ask people in your job and the people that you surround yourself with, ask them if they know that you're a Christian, what would they say? And that's the thing that I, because I'm very excited because if you become a believer, People should know. Amen. People should know that you are a believing, that God saves your soul and delivers you from things, right? Amen. People should know about that. And that is something, and that is Paul here in Romans chapter 1 is talking about that he is not ashamed of the gospel, right? We should not be ashamed of the gospel. You know, there are, there are things that, you know, it's good to be ashamed of, you know? It's good to be ashamed of. I remember... The first time um, growing up back home in Samoa, I, it, it, like, we only have one store in the island, and everybody goes to that store. And there were times that we didn't have enough money. So my mom would give us all this list, and it's called IOU. You go to the store, and you give them the list, and you say, when we get the check. And I remember as, as a kid, I used to be so ashamed because our bill's not paid yet, and here's my mom sending me again to go look, to go give the, the order to the store, which we still owe money. So I was very ashamed. There are things that we, you should be ashamed of, right? I, one of the things I was thinking in my, my head that I was, when I was preparing this message, you know what I was ashamed of? I was ashamed telling my Italian wife that I made lasagna with ramen noodle. <laughs> right? I should be ashamed of that. Right? And, and all the Italian, when I told all the real Italian that I made ramen noodle, I should have never told them. I should have never told them. Because they look at me, they were like, they want to beat me up or something. 
right? I, and the, the thing that you should be ashamed of, I should have been ashamed of that making ramen, but it, listen, it was good. Okay, it was delicious. <laughs> All that matters, right? <laughs> there was one time, um, the, I remember one of the things that was, I was very ashamed of as a kid, I was 11 years old, and um, I stole a boxing glove because I was obsessed with boxing, and I stole boxing gloves. And the person that I stole the boxing glove from was my neighbor, and my neighbor was a pastor of the IF. And I stole boxing glove, and I remember stealing, stealing the boxing glove, and my dad got home and saw the boxing glove, and my dad took me and brought me to the pastor to return the boxing glove to the pastor. And the, my dad said, you can spank him. And I remember I was so ashamed to give him the glove, and I got a spanking from the pastor of the island, right? And, and those are the things that, you know, a shame that we should never, that we should never be ashamed of the gospel. Amen. You know, Shame means reluctant to do something through fear of embarrassment or, hum or, or humiliation. We can be ashamed of a lot of things, but we should never be ashamed of the gospel. Can I read you our scripture for tonight? Amen. It's in Romans chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 1 to 17. Romans chapter 1, verse um, chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. For I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not, somebody say, I am not. I am not. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in its righteousness of God reveal the faith of for faith, it is written that righteous shall live by faith. Amen. He says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel. What does gospel mean? Gospel means good news, right? We, we, we like to tell people about good news. We don't want to tell the bad news. Listen, there was a good news that I heard about tonight. Right? That Miss Bella and Sean got engaged. That's good news. We celebrate. Right? Congratulations. Right? But good news is meant to be shared. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is meant to be shared to people. It's not meant for you to keep it to yourself. The gospel of Jesus, the good news, is meant to what? To share. Hallelujah. Here is Paul, right? Here is Paul talking about, right, to the people, the Christian that's in Rome at this time. Because Paul, in, 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 this, in this chapter, Paul is longing to go to Rome. He wants to go to Rome. He's not there yet. He didn't get there yet, but he wants to go to Rome. But he's encouraging the Christian that are in Rome, right? He's encouraging them and telling the Christian and thanking them for their faith. And also that Paul is saying here that he wants to come and impart spiritual gifts to the Christian that are there, right? So some of the good news that needs to be shared. What are some of the good news that needs to be shared? The good news of the grace of God, Right? That the grace of God in Acts chapter 20, 24, I'm going to turn to that if you have your Bible with you, right? In Acts chapter 20, verse 24, but I do not account my life of a value nor a precious to myself if I only may finish my course and that the ministry that I have received from the Lord Jesus Christ to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. You have, people, we have to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not meant for you just to keep it to yourself. It's meant to share. So Paul here is talking about, I am not ashamed of the gospel. 
Sometimes, too many times as a Christian, we are ashamed of the gospel, right? We go to, when you go to work, you don't want to talk about your faith because you are afraid, you are ashamed that what may think about you or what may you look like to them. Oh, there's that dude right there. He's different. Because then we, we don't, we are ashamed because we don't want people to talk about us. You don't want people to talk about you because you're ashamed of the gospel. So you don't, want, you don't want to share the gospel. But here is Paul telling Paul, listen, if you understand something about Paul, Paul was the one who can shank you in the time before he even came to Christ. He was the one that's going after Christian. Paul was going after Christian in those times. But guess what? Paul found good news. Where did he find good news? The road to Damascus. Right? He said he found good news, and that good news changed him. So when he changed him, he caused him to say, you know what? I am proud to carry this gospel with me. So what, guess what I'm doing? I'm sharing it. I am not afraid to share the gospel. Too many people, too many people in our life, too many Christians, we just come, oh, we go to church, finish church, you go back home. But you go to work next to the person that you know that's going through a lot of things. You are so afraid to share the gospel because you don't want them to think, oh, this guy's a freak. He's talking about this Jesus coming back. Paul is saying we should not be ashamed. Paul, we should not be ashamed of the gospel. There are things that you should be ashamed of, but it is one thing that you should not be ashamed of is the gospel of Jesus Christ. He said, the song that Pastor Jesse was singing, he says, he wore my sin, so guess what? I gladly wore his name. So if his name is on you, gladly wear that, right? Tell people about his love. Tell people, tell people about the gospel, how Jesus changed your life around. Because you know why? You didn't know the gospel at one point. Somebody came and gave you the gospel. Because, you know, and when you found the gospel, you're like, what is this good news? And some of us, too many people, or some of us, we get the gospel, it's like, I'm just going to sit with it. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Go home and never get to share the gospel. Then there are other people, there are other Christians that we like to share the gospel all over in, in places but we forgot the main thing that we should share the gospel in your home. Yeah. That you should share your gospel with your kids. That you should share the gospel with your husband or your wife. I'm spitting here now. Thank you. Right? These are some of the good news. Good news is the grace of God. Good news it's about his kingdom, that we have a kingdom. That when Jesus said, I'm going somewhere to prepare a place. You guess what? He's saying that in John, right? He's preparing a place. He's preparing a place for a long time. Imagine what that's going to look like. That is good news to us. That should be good news to you. That Jesus, he just didn't leave you there. He said, guess what? I'm coming back. I'm coming back to get hallelujah that is something to be excited about that is something that we should and Christians should be thinking oh my goodness I can't wait for the day Jesus show up at your door and be like Jesus I'm, I'm ready I got my stuff right that is good news that he saves your soul amen good news of his kingdom good news of his peace these are some of the good news that we have peace in him you ever been in a place that's just chaos? Right? There are, there are some times that you've been to a place that is chaos, and you can pinpoint one person that's in that chaos that you can definitely see peace. Why? Because he's proclaiming the name of Jesus, and he's standing firm in that. Right? You can pinpoint people out that has peace. No matter, I remember working at DYS, no matter what happened, there will be chaos, cold tool going everywhere. Everybody's like running everywhere. And here, like, here I am. One of my managers said, I don't know how you think he's so calm. In every situation, you restrain the kids with a smile. <laughs> yeah. 
right? It's because I know because the good news is in me. And that news, need, that good news needs to come out. And there are some times that that good news, it doesn't just sit in, it, it, it has to come out. Why? How's it come out? You have to speak. You have to say something. Is the person just sitting next to you, the person that's going through a lot, and here you are. You have to say, you have to speak up the, the, the gospel, the good news. When you have the good news, you like to share it. Amen? Amen. I remember when Adrian got pregnant, I, tell, I almost told everybody. If I have a, the number of the third world country, they would know that I'm having a baby girl. Because it's good news. Jesus is the good news. Come on. He saved. Listen, I, you have to understand where your life was and where your life is now. Because I can think it to myself. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Where would I be? Where would I be if it wasn't for the gospel of Jesus Christ? If it wasn't for the good news that came and saved me? So we have to share the good news. What? Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So Paul, right, in, in, the first, in this first chapter, Paul, in, in the beginning of the chapter, every book that Paul is wrote, has written, he always said that Paul was set apart for the gospel. Paul was set apart. Guess what? You were set apart for the gospel. Oh, I don't know how. I don't know the Bible. I don't know, I don't, well, get reading. I don't know how to speak. Well, come and have a conversation with people so that you can know how to talk. We make too many excuses of how we don't share the gospel. I'm the shy person. Really? You are? Okay. Were you shy when somebody, when that person shy when they came to share the gospel to you? Now you have that good news? Listen, church, we need to share the good news. People need to know when you walk into a workplace, when you walk into the, people need to know that you are a believing in the God that's coming, in the Savior that's coming again, that saved you from your sin. People need to know that, right? Paul, in the beginning of the chapter, he said, Paul was set apart. We all were set apart from God, Right? To share the gospel. Paul was an apostle, right? And apostle was a special ma messenger who, whose task was to spread the gospel message. To spread the gospel message. To spread the gospel message. To spread the good news. To spread. Tell people to spread. Yeah. Listen to me. To spread the gospel. We, we cannot just come every Sunday, every Thursday, every Bible study, everything, and just keep it to ourselves and not, not, not anybody know about what we believe in. They have to know. Amen? Somebody say, they have to know. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, we have to spread the gospel. Paul was writing this to the Christian in Rome where, I know I said it before, longing, because Paul was longing to go to Rome. He wanted to go to Rome. Paul was saying in verse 8, right, Paul was saying, your faith is proclaiming in all the world. Paul was telling them that your faith to the Christian, that your faith is proclaiming all the world. Because of your faith, people all over the world is knowing because of your faith proclaiming all over the world. Listen, the people that you work with needs to know that you have faith in God. Amen. People need to know. I don't want to scream a lot. <clears throat> right? So Paul, in verse 8, I know I'm going through the chapter, right? In verse 8, Paul was saying that, that to the Christian that were there, they were encouraging the Christian that your faith Paul wanted to impart them some spiritual gift, 
right, to impart in them the spiritual gift. Pastor Frank was talking about Sunday and the Sunday before about spiritual gift, that we have spiritual gift from God. That's something that God can give it to you, right? Impart of a spiritual gift, right? And when we get those spiritual gifts, we have to use it for what? For his kingdom. We cannot just give, God cannot just give you spiritual gift and you just sit and be like, okay, I got this now. Yes, sir. No, you had to use it. I remember the time when I first got saved, I went to, a, I wasn't saved yet. I went to Alaska. My brother moved to Alaska first and my sister. They were in Alaska. My brother wasn't saved at the time, right? When they moved to Alaska, he found Jesus, right? So when I moved to Alaska, I got there and I went to church. I went to the church for the first time with my uncle, and I see my brother playing the bass. What the heck? He never played bass when we were growing up. Nobody taught him bass. The next Sunday, he's playing the guitar. I'm like, what is going on here? The other Sunday, he was playing the drums. Then on the other Sunday, he was playing the piano. I'm like, I got to ask a question. I went to my uncle. I was like, did he go to a school that I didn't know of to play all the instruments? And he goes, no. When he became, when God, when he gave his life to Jesus, learning himself, God just gifted him with all those. Amen. Learning himself. One of the best player, best bass player ever knows, my brother. But the moment I talked with my brother, I, I spoke to him about this because he moved and he walk away from God, walk away from the Lord. And I said to him, I was like, I said to my brother, I was like, Tilay, listen to me. God has blessed you with gifts that nobody, there are people out there paying $20, probably $50 for their kids to go a piano lesson. But you, God has gifted you. You know what? If you're not using it for his glory and his kingdom, it's going to take that away from you and give it to somebody else that wants to use it. So when God gave you a spiritual gift in the church, right, and bless you with a spiritual gift, you have to use it. Use it. Exercise it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 14, Paul was under the obligation both, he said, the, the Greek and the barbarians to the wise and to the foolish. He was under obligation. Guess what? You're under obligation to tell people about Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm not going to tell that person because he had money. No! He has money. He needs Jesus too. To the rich and to the poor, to the fullest and to the wise, we need, we are under obligation to tell somebody about Jesus, about the good news. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul was eager to preach the gospel, the good news. Us believers should be eager to follow and serve Jesus. He said that in verse 15, listen, he said that Paul was eager. He was, so, he was excited. He was, because he was longing to go to Rome. He goes, man, I want to get there. I want to tell people about the love of God. I want to preach there. Paul is so eager. He said, I want to preach the gospel to the Rome. He was so, he's eager. Listen, as a Christian, we should be eager for the things of God. We should be wanting more than the things of God. We should want to tell somebody, eager to tell somebody about the good news. We should be eager to that. Paul said, I'm eager to preach the gospel. You should be eager. Do you know why? Because, listen, the reason why I'm so eager about the way I live my life according to his will, right, the reason why I live my life the way I am, because I'm eager because you know what? He showed me the good news. He saves my soul. He delivered me from all the things that I couldn't even deliver myself from. Only Jesus can deliver you from those things, right? But we are under obligation, Woo, and we should be eager. Woo we should be excited. We should be eager. Listen, I, there, there are times when you should be excited, and there are times they'd be like, okay, that's wrong, right? When we are eager for the things of God, guess what? God will give you more, Amen. right? Eager for the things of God. Go, okay, God, 
Let me preach this sermon. I remember the first time I was preaching a sermon. I wasn't eager to preach a sermon. Because I first got saved, I, in my own mind, said, oh, I don't know the Bible. I just got saved. I don't know the Bible. But when God just gave me the word, I just speak the interpreter that was right next to me. goes, yo, you got to slow down. I got to interpret everything that you say. And now, when I, when, when I get a, a, a Pastor Frank say, oh, you need to preach, I, woo-hoo! listen, I get so excited when he tell me, you got an opportunity to preach. I get so, I'm eager to study the word of God, right, to get to know him more, right, because he had given me the good news to spread it to the people. <laughs> so we have to be excited. We have to be eager. Pastor Missy, stop, because you're just excited all the time. No, you too should be excited. Amen. You too should be eager. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. We should be eager to serve. We should be eager to share the truth. We should be eager to give. We should be eager to pray. There's some of us, we are not eager to pray at all. Then all of a sudden, God, I want this, I want this, but you're not eager to spend time with him. Literally spending time with him in prayer. But God, I, I really want this new thing. God, I really... But you don't have spending time. You're not eager when you go in his presence. We need to be eager. Paul said, I'm eager to preach the gospel. That is something exciting that we all should have. Maybe you're not going to be a preacher, but you can share the word of God. You can tell them, hey, guess what? I got delivered from this and this. I didn't do it my own. Only Jesus came in my life and delivered me from that. You know, you can share. Even in your action. Right? People showing, you showing up in people's life when they don't even need it. Sharing the gospel. That's the good news. Oh, my. I didn't even get to my point. It is 8 o'clock. All right. So, so, so listen to this. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel. Amen? Uh, let, me get, let me get five five minutes, okay? Hallelujah. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel. Paul thought of himself as his slave of Jesus Christ, his master and his Lord. Jesus loved him and gave himself for him, and therefore Paul was sure that no longer, that he no longer belonged to himself, but entirely to Jesus. When you come to know him, you don't belong to yourself. You belong to him. Belong to him. And when you belong to him, you do everything to tell people about that the love that he gave you, you will do anything, right? Because you belong to him. Amen? Amen. Paul is saying that he was proud, right? He said he was, he said, I'm not the shame of the gospel. But Paul is literally, to me, he said, he's saying that he was proud of the gospel, which it was his privilege to, to preach. He was proud of it. It's not a shame of it. He was proud of it, the, about the gospel. For the privilege for him that God endure him at the road of Damascus to give him the, the, the word to preach to, to the people. He was proud about it. Because if you know, man, I didn't want to know Paul before. When he was Saul, I didn't even want to know him. Right? Who will shank you in, in the, wherever you are. Right? But see how amazing when God comes in. Right? Listen. See how amazing the Paul, the reason why Paul said, do not be ashamed of the gospel, right? Right, because the gospel, listen, the gospel brings three things. I'm just going to close it with this. Three things, right? For I am not ashamed of the gospel for the power, listen, for the power of God through salvation. Whose power? God's power, Right? We, we rely on our, sometimes we rely on our power, how far we can do it. No, you can't. You cannot. Only when you rely on his power, only his power, salvation will come. Paul is saying, I'm not ashamed because 
the power. I'm not ashamed because you know why? Because the power that I have in me, right, it brings salvation to the people. So one, number one, it brings power, right, and also brings salvation. What is salvation? <laughs> you have been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That he died and he rose again. Forgave all your sin. He said he forgave all your sin from the east to the west. He came to save your soul. When somebody came, the price that you had to pay, he paid it all. So when somebody like that pays a price, guess what? You had nothing else to do but to tell and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Should not be ashamed of it. Should be eagerly wants to share the gospel. Amen? The gospel of, right? So it's the power. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel, the good news has power, right? And not only that, he has power, it brings salvation, right? It brings salvation to the people. Only through the power of God can bring salvation. And guess what? And to everyone who believes, to everyone, listen to me. It says, Paul is saying, to everyone. I know it says Jews and to the Gentile, but it says to everyone who believe. So our job is to share the gospel, right? And to rely on the power from him. Amen. Because we cannot bring salvation. We cannot bring sal salvation to anybody else but the power of God. Through him, salvation comes. Amen? Amen. Stand with me. I'm close. Sorry that I went over. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Pastor says, we see a place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the gospel of Jesus Christ, church, and people that are watching online, the gospel of Jesus, right, Jesus Christ is not too meant for you to hold on to it like this. And we should even be ashamed of the gospel. You should be eager to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter what your excuse may be, rely on God's power. Because only... His power, that through his power, salvation will come. People will come through salvation if you rely on his power. Amen. All we have to do is to share the gospel. It's to tell people about the good news. What is good news? Right? That Jesus saves your soul. That he deliver you and wash away all your sin. That nobody else can do that except for him. Nobody can wash away anybody's sin except for Jesus. People need to come to know Jesus. People need to come to know God. And church, it's our job to spread the gospel. Amen. That we should not be ashamed of it. That we should be eagerly wants to share the truth that we have. Like I said earlier, Right? When I received the good news that my wife, the first, our first child, Liliana, when she was pregnant, I'm telling you, I was so excited. If the moon sees me, how excited I was, they will see the smile on my face. I was so excited. But through all that, right, no matter how much excitement that I was with my daughter, but when Jesus came into my life, when Jesus delivered me from my sin, right? When he came and made the crooked path straight in my life, I was more excited than that. Because he is the best thing. Jesus is the best decision I ever made in my life. Amen. He is the best thing that I ever made in my life. It was him. So tonight, right? 
if you are saying to yourself tonight that, Pastor Missy, I, I don't know how to share the gospel. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Listen, you, you talk to God. God will give you the words to say. And to look in this, this is one of the most powerful things that God has given us, his manual for your life. Look into this. God will help you through that, to spread the gospel. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, God, for the good news that Jesus died and rose again. Lord, that John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him will not perish but have it everlasting life. We thank you for that everlasting life. We thank you that we can come to you in moments when we're down, in the moments when we're up, in the moments when we get confused, in the moment when we feel so inadequate, God. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that we can come to you. And I pray for every single person in here, God, Lord, that those moments when they are uh, wants to share the gospel to somebody right next to them in their, in their job, in their home, in their friend, in their group friends, and wherever they may be, Lord, in those moments when they are wants to share the gospel and the, and, and the minute they, they feel ashamed or, 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 or um, nervous, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit will rush in, God. I pray that you will put words in their mouth. I pray, I pray that you will, Lord, 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 that you will come, God, and just over the, over, overwhelm them, God, with your spirit. Lord, teach us how to be people that knows how to share your gospel, God. Teach us how to be not ashamed of your gospel. Lord, that we will be eager, God, as, as Paul said, that, Lord, I am eager to come and preach in Rome. Lord, that we were eager to tell our friend about the truth. The co-worker that's right now that's depressed or whatever it may be, God, Lord, that we were eager to tell them the salvation is found in you. Now, Lord, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for your gospel. We thank you for your good news. I pray over your people as they go today, God, tomorrow as they go to work, I pray the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, that you would just anoint them, God. Lord, wherever, when they speak to people, that people will come to you, God, Lord, that the power of God will come and deliver them, God. Lord, I pray this in your name. I pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. amen. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.